Welcome back to Continuum Meditations Discusses. We were talking about the 24 formula of action in our last episode, and now I'd like to pick up on where 24 Legacy is fulfilling and potentially going beyond that formula. Now, there will be spoilers from here on, so if that's not your thing, go away now. Otherwise, we drive on. So, what are some of the 20 formula, as I like to call it, what are some of the 20 formula parallels between the original and the new spinoff? One thing out of the box you see is the establishment that a threat of some kind is coming. From the very opening moments of 24 Legacy, there's the creation of a mystery surrounding a man being tied, beaten, and eventually killed, along with his entire family as his assailants ransack his home in search of something vital to their mission. This is given further explanation within the first ten minutes of the show when Eric Carter receives a phone call from one of his old ranger buddies telling him that his team has been found by a man who is only identified at this point in the premiere as Ben Khalid. And this kind of fast-moving motif was often repeated in the original show in various ways. But before this comes the introduction of our new hero, Eric Carter, who is living an ordinary, maybe even mundane life by some standards, a life that is about to be upended by the extraordinary events he'll soon find himself thrust into. This not only applies to him, but to members of his family, in this case his wife, Nicole, and at some level his estranged brother, Isaac. This, of course, mirrors Jack Bauer's own introduction in the original series, with some variations, of course, when we first meet him trying to set his personal house back in order after being separated from his wife and, consequently, his daughter, and attempting to just be a man in charge of a government agency, CTU, without any major fireworks getting in the way. Now, this wish is eventually upended when his old boss, Richard Walsh, drags Jack into helping him uncover a major conspiracy to assassinate then-Senator David Palmer, who was at the time running for President of the United States, just as current character Senator John Donovan is now. And this leads us into another parallel between the two series. Just as Jack is eventually drawn into the orbit of the upright and honorable David Palmer, so it appears that eventually Eric Carter will be thrust into the shadow of John Donovan. And this begs me ask the question, will John Donovan eventually become POTUS, President of the United States, with Eric Carter as his new off-the-book man in the shadows fighting against the latest threat to the American people, just as Jack was first to David Palmer and then to successive presidents after him. Now, there are some differences. Where David Palmer's family was, more or less, on board his decision to run and ultimately succeed to the office of president, even with his wife Sherry Palmer ambitiously trying to use maneuver and guile to get him elected, John Donovan appears to have no children whom we've seen so far, but he does have a wife with her own ambitions who may be awkwardly placed back at the center of a counter-terrorist government agency for her, while her husband continues his quest for the White House. He also seems to have a campaign manager who could potentially have ties to radical Islamic groups or perhaps other people with hidden agendas. Now, undoubtedly, as you watch the original 24 TV series across its eight years plus uh, 24 Live Another Day, uh, you would have noticed without question that hidden agendas were often a staple of the original series, ordinarily with them beginning as the actions of low-level terrorist individuals or groups uh, and ending with high-level government functionaries or leaders themselves. Now, this, because these terrorists were acting at the lowest level of the food chain, if you will, did not mean that what they were doing was not dangerous. It most certainly were, was. You had several examples of this from people like Habib Marwan in year four who tried to set off a nuclear device or uh, should I say launch a nuclear missile uh, on the mainland of the United States. He managed to uh, degrade several nuclear power plants around, across the country and uh, caused them to, to leak uh, radiation into the air. You had um, other people across the years who did the, I guess you could say, the low-level grunt work of unleashing these national security threats against the country. But ultimately, what you found at the end of the conclusion of whatever day it was, day four, day six, day five, that these individuals were not acting of their own accord, whether they realized it or not. Some of them were, in fact, patsies. 
uh, who did not know who their concealed masters really were. But at the end of the day, when everything was concluded, you found that these people were acting uh, on the behest of greater uh, individuals, greater uh, masters than themselves with greater, far greater agendas than they actually had. And these uh, agendas by these high-level government functionaries or leaders was often itself paralleled by the participation of business tycoons and captains of various industries who themselves had a vested interest in using the power of the United States government to enrich themselves through the provocation of these national security emergencies. So, will something like of this nature unfold in 24 Legacy? I believe it will be more than likely the case. Now, we're too early in the new show to have seen anyone in the national security structure uh, having been killed yet, but we have seen some who may already be compromised. Neela Mizrani, for example, uh, and Keith Mullins, the current director of CTU, who it is suspected of having betrayed Eric and his rangers to Ibrahim bin Khalid's people in America. And this is part of the sublayers of the second level of the 20 formula, as I refer to it, that being the notion of... Uh, as we were just, just just discussing, those people with hidden agendas, those uh, enemies who are concealed and not so concealed, people who are closer to uh, the um, to the hero uh, than we might think, and uh, who might be an enemy, even though they are they at first appear to be a friend or a comrade. We've also seen the first potential casualty of the series in the form of Drew Phelps who was attacked and severely injured by his teacher, David Harris, after the young man discovered that his former girlfriend, uh, Amira Dudayev, uh, and Mr. Harris were planning terrorist attacks with one another against what is currently an unknown target. Drew uh, suffered a head injury that has effectively prevented him from warning anyone of what he's found, and thus keeping Amira and David in play to do whatever it is they will eventually be ordered to do. And this is in fact part of the substructure of the third formulation of the 20 formula, that is uh, the cancellation of uh, people who are vital to the national security uh, structure, that is vital to preventing whatever kind of attack that might, com might come. Uh, it's vital to that third formulation of the 20 formula, as I like to call it, and this is something that was repeated often during the first series, not just people, of course, who were inside of the national security establishment, but even their, their contacts and other people who might have been potential allies or people who may have been potential informers. Next, we've already seen Eric Carter undergoing micro changes or micro advances to his outlook as the New Day's events unfold. So far, he's managed to display ingenuity and cunning in the form of breaking into a police station as a suspect, something Jack Bauer himself accomplished at least twice in the show in the first program and uh, by way of Eric using a steel tube uh, to simultaneously use it as both a method of concealment for himself against attack but also as a weapon of attack against Ben Khalid's people uh, in the construction yard during the final moments of hour two of 24 Legacies premiere. Now, uh, that might seem like a minor instance there, that, that second thing there, but uh, you see Jack Bauer using very inge in, uh, ingenious methods like this throughout the life cycle uh, of the original 24 series. So this is just another one of those, I guess you could say, microcosm uh, looks at the new Eric Carter and how he is already prepared mentally to uh, use his environment, just as Jack Bauer did. He uses his environment as both a weapon uh, of attack and as a defense for himself against his adversaries and for his friends. He did this multiple times throughout the series, whether it was with himself and Tony Almeida or other people who were under attack with, with Jack Bauer. Now we've also watched Rebecca Ingram become deviously inventive by acquiring Andy Shalowitz's help at CTU to circumvent Keith Mullins and run a covert operation to help Eric find the Ben Khalid flash drive without Mullins' knowledge. Now this included uh, Rebecca tasering Keith Mullins when he tried to interfere and then locking him up and continuing the operation anyway. And I can't tell you how many times something like this was done in 24, uh, the original 24, on Jack's behalf. Whether it was by Tony Almeida or Michelle Dessler or Chloe O'Brien or any number of others in or outside CTU. So the parallels are quite strong here, and I suspect we're going to only see more of these as Legacy goes on. But simultaneously, I would like to see some differences in this program too, and let's get to that next. 
This is a new era, and while the fundamental threats of NBC-style terrorism and its methodologies are basically still the same, save for some upgraded technological interventions, of course, the actors and their rationales for acting are not. Not either are the worldviews the same for those who come up in this new era. When Jack Bauer was growing up as a child and as a very young man, he would have had the backdrop of the Cold War and many of its personalities to shape his outlook on how the world operated and why it operated in the fashion it did. In the wake of the Cold War, Jack would have watched the overarching ideology of East versus West collapse and be replaced by a much more chaotic world in which various actors functioned, not under the guiding lights of communism versus capitalism, but of various ethno-national and religious conflicts many of whom had issues with Western intervention into their societies and who acted on their disgruntlement to attack the West as payback. Now, I don't know how old Eric Carter is specifically, but I assume he cannot be older than 30 to 35 years old. And I actually think he's younger than 30, but if I'm wrong, so be it. And he's certainly far younger than Jack Bauer, that's for sure. Now, if he is in his early 30s, that is, if Eric is in his early 30s or younger, that means he was born and came of age after the Cold War was effectively over. And though he may have been old enough to watch the fall of the Berlin Wall and the Tiananmen Square student uprising of 1989 or the collapse of communism itself in 1991, the biggest event that would have shaped Eric's worldview would be the September 11th attacks of 2001. Not only this, but Eric has come of age in an era in which mass communication and technology have radically and fundamentally altered the world economy, world politics, and the ways and means in which the peoples of the world interact. And while Jack Bauer had to take the time to learn and adapt to these new realities, Eric Carter was born into them and knows them like second nature. And this is especially true if he's in his 20s. So these circumstances set up opportunities for new ways of thinking and acting that will set this new character apart from Jack Bauer, potentially for both the better and worse. The better because it can help Eric find new and creative avenues of confronting his opponents that Jack might regard as too passive or reliant on technological in interventions instead of instinct and raw guts. And possibly worse because they could fail to take into account an understanding of basic human nature and instinct and how to manipulate and control it, something Jack Bauer was very good at. And of course, I cannot fail to mention that he was also very good at technological interventions of his day as well. But those also have fundamentally and radically changed from Jack Bauer's time about to 10 to basically about 15 years ago. So whatever this new hero's character arc, that is the character arc of Eric Carter, it's for sure that we will see a personality that is not only different from Jack's in worldview, but also in the manner in which he takes action. This should definitely provide us with a unique take on the 24 universe that incorporates this new world paradigms that we currently live and provides us with some very interesting drama. Now, let me take the time to address something I've seen around the internet, a criticism that's been levied against the new legacy program in the wake of the Donald Trump election in the United States. 24 Legacy has been accused by some critics as buying wholesale or nearly as much into Islamophobia, especially in light of current President of the United States Donald Trump's executive order, which some claim is in effect a Muslim ban, enacted against the seven countries of Syria, Sudan, Yemen, Iran, Iraq, Libya, and Somalia. And now, I am not going to get into the politics of how or why these nations were chosen in this discussion, because I am here to talk about 24 Legacy, not to criticize or praise the Donald J. Trump administration. But, with respect to the politics of the 24 universe and their relationship to the real world, perhaps we should be reminded that the original series also navigated a world that was laden with ethno-nationalist terrorists, including those of the Islamic variety, and during a time frame in which a relatively conservative administration led by a man named George W. Bush governed. 24 did this without leaning too far to the left or right on the political meter, and without even telling us what party was in control of the United States Congress, or what the leaning or political party of the President of the United States who occupied the White House was at the time. So I don't think people need worry about 24 Legacy becoming a propaganda mouthpiece for the Trump administration in any way while it runs on the television, and I would encourage people to disregard the uh, notions of these critics who are out here trying to 
uh, stoke the flames of of fear by telling us that somehow or another the new 24 legacy series has bought into and is now perpetuating the notion that somehow or another uh, we have Islamic terrorists under every bed and therefore we must go to sleep at night fearing that somehow or another we're going to have uh, any number of style NBC attacks against our country and any day by people claiming or, or shouting Allah Akbar. So I think we can safely dismiss the notion that 24 Legacy will do this to us and that we should, while we, yes, while we should look at its relationship to the real world and recognize that it will use real world ideas and real world events as a possible backdrop for what it, it has to say in its series, we should remember that this is a fictional story told by people who have already shown themselves capable of being good stewards of the television program that they created without going too far in trying to propagandize us with their own particular ideologies and philosophies, whatever they may happen to be. I'll wrap up by saying that I believe 24 Legacy is an interesting show. I will continue to give it an opportunity to prove itself and to demonstrate its effectiveness as an offshoot of the original series in the 24 universe. I do think it has some potential. I do in fact believe that it is fulfilling uh, my extrapolations of the 20 formula uh, very near to a T. There have been some surprises. As a matter of fact, I just got through watching the third episode in order and uh, they did surprise me with a few things that they brought out in this particular episode that were not what I expected, but that's fine. However, most of what I have seen so far on this uh, program has not surprised me, and that's okay, however, because the show is young. It still has plenty of room to grow and to change and to bring those of us who were originally on board the first series uh, into its orbit and uh, give us a few new lessons or as the old colloquialism goes teach an old dog new tricks so I'm hoping that there will definitely be opportunity for that until then I'm going to keep watching the program see where it leads us uh, I am hoping that um, just like Jack Bauer Eric Carter will uh, change and grow in ways that we don't expect so on, I don't know however um, whether or not I'm going to do regular weekly reviews of this series. I'm not inclined to do that just yet. Uh, 24, the original 24 changed so fast and moved so fast that uh, when I watched it originally I found it somewhat of a, I guess you could say something uh, somewhat difficult to try to analyze everything in detail because everything moved at such a rapid pace and it was prone to change at such a rapid pace that one set of predictions or uh, suppositions was almost instantly thrown out by the very next episode. Uh, so uh, I might go and do a long-term analysis over uh, a, a number of episodes, two, three, maybe even four episodes before I do any other kind of analysis. Now this, uh, this particular series is only 12 episodes long for this first season, so we'll see what happens with that. But until next time, 24 fans, just like our intrepid hero Jack Bauer always did in the first series, and as we are hoping that our new hero Eric Carter will do in this series, until next time, 24 fans, live another day.